Hello, how are you doing? Are you okay? Well, we have a few minutes to discuss on how to translate theory into practice when we are talking about disaster risk reduction, but also when we are talking about inclusion and when we are talking about climate change and how can we make a better world in terms of safety from disasters. It was a, big, it was a long journey in the Americas and particularly in the countries, small countries in the Caribbean, and also how can we include people with disabilities into the disaster risk management. So we will talk about three areas of work. One, safe hospitals. The other one would be smart hospitals, and the other one would be inclusion of people with disabilities in disaster risk management. So we are talking about what happens. So there are certain facts hundreds of hospitals and thousands of health facilities are affected daily in terms of emergencies. But big disasters have a big havoc in terms of losing lives of patients, of health personnel. But the most important thing is that millions of people are without those health services exactly the times when they need it. So we cannot just wait for disasters to happen or it is easy, it is very nice to see first responders, medical doctors, emergency medical teams, and all others coming to rescue the people. But unfortunately, we cannot do that without health facilities. And the health facilities, when we talk about health facilities, we have to talk about two things. One is, can we do everything with all health facilities? Is it feasible? It is not feasible because we will need all the money in the world, all the political will that usually is not present, but also the timing, and we don't have time to do that. We have to concentrate in those that can make the difference and save lives. And with that, we turn into the facilities that have the crucial services to save lives. And saving lives mean that the health facilities, especially the hospitals, not only not collapse, they should remain operational in emergencies. And operational means that the structure, that the equipment and the personnel is there and the supplies are there. And we can provide the services that we need in those uh, uh, occasions. So when we look at, at that, we did an analysis of what is happening in the, in the health facilities. And we saw that many of them, are fortunately, are at out of, will be out of work in emergencies. So the category C that you see there is 12% of the hospitals will most probably not only go out of service, but also will collapse and will kill their personnel. It is not that much, but it is so crucial because those are particularly in the most affected areas, more at risk areas. So what, we, what can we do? With that information, we know now, in more than 90 countries in the world, which hospitals will operate in emergencies as which ones will not operate in emergencies. That means that now we can know if there is an emergency, where to send the support, or which hospitals will be operational so we don't need the support. It is a preparedness tool, it is a response tool, it is also and means to say, where do we begin on implementing the disaster mitigation measures? But doing that is not enough. Climate change is here. It's a reality. And it has many impacts on health. And waiting for the right answer for all the questions, you know, it will be endless. So we need to move on those. So where there are certain facts, certain facts that are crucial for what we discuss. So climate change is impacting the health sector, yes, but the health sector also is one of the most important contributors to climate change or climate warning. So it is important to realize that. It is not that we are in the health sector or medical doctors or physicians or patients, the victims of climate change. We are also contributing in some sense to that. So we need to do something about that. So in, in that regards, we establish safe and green. So that is called smart hospitals. And smart hospitals is, is an initiative that is being implemented in, in the Caribbean. And with those goals, ensure that health facilities 
are disaster uh, resilient and environmentally friendly. But the most important thing is that these health facilities will continue operating emergencies, but also the self-sufficiency of these health facilities will remain in the long term. But guess what? Also, savings in terms of money that is going for electricity, for water, and also chemical use. So those are the things that we are looking for in the Caribbean. And that initiative is on. That initiative is being implemented in many countries. We have several goals to go, but it is those countries, probably many of you may not know where they are, but they are in the Caribbean, they are small countries. So we're not talking about big countries with all the money. We're talking about small countries, sometimes two or three hospitals. But if those hospitals do not operate because they have hurricanes or earthquakes or, or climate change, unfortunately, all the population of those countries will be out as it happened a couple of years ago in many islands with Hurricane Maria and Irma happening in the same season. So we are looking at how we process. So it is, it may look complicated, but it's actually easy. And it is logic. And we are pro produ uh, producing several clear impacts of that. And we'll see. For example, we have assessments. So we, we do training on the hospital safety index, and we have the people involved, the health personnel, the engineers, the architects, the disaster risk management agencies are part participating in that. After the assessment, we do also the training and basic assessment tools for the hospitals in terms of what are their use of energy, what is their use of water, how are they performing in terms of emergency management, and without those assessments, we go to the next phase and we ask the community to participate in the design of those modifications, upgrades to the hospital. And the community participates in town hall meetings. And they come and discuss. We are not talking about only people with disabilities. We're talking about the elderly, the community, the neighborhood that never have the opportunity to participate in the design. And they go to those town halls and they say, look, the entrance cannot be there. The way that the people are treating me is not fair. The resources are not there. The electricity, the uh, uh, environment, the air condition, et cetera, et cetera. So they participate in the design. And then we go to the actual works with bidding process, the implementation, and the works are done. And the works are done, including the people with disabilities. So we perform those, uh, those works in the Caribbean, and we have newer health facilities. The old ones, but renewed, adapted. So the mitigation is something that it, it is not a way. This is not a dream. This is a reality. And this reality has been transformed into something that we can hand over those health facilities to the community, the government, the healthcare workers. And we see the savings immediately. And we see also that these health facilities are the only ones that are operational after emergencies. In some areas like, the, for example, the British Virgin Islands, these health facilities were the only ones operating. Even the National Emergency Management Office have to be moved to the BBI hospital to operate from that hospital because that one, the only one with electricity, with water, with all the security issues, with all the communications, etc. So it is beyond the health sector. And then there are many tools. Because of that process is already happening in the last four or five years, we have many tools, and those tools are available. Those tools are something that has been built with the community, with the experts, with many other uh, experts, that we have those tools being also like live uh, tools and documents, because they are upgraded, they are modified according to what we see. So all those tools are, uh, exist. And we move towards a new one, inclusion. We talk about inclusion for many, probably decades. But talking philosophy is enough. 
We need to move into something concrete. We need to do something for some people, counting how many people with disabilities are being included. And doing that is not that easy, but it's not hard either. So we included that in the hospital disaster management uh, process. So we, we are seeing why are they being affected by emergencies. The first thing is that we don't know who they are, where they are. There is no strong data available, unfortunately. And we know that those people are having several problems with that. So we see, for example, that they don't participate in disaster risk management. And we see that many people are not even visible in the health facilities. You know what? In the hospitals. In the hospitals that we reviewed in several countries in the Americas, new hospitals and all hospitals did not even know that their own healthcare workers were people with disabilities. They were working there 20 years, 30 years. They knew each other, they knew their names, but their disabilities were not taken into, into consideration. And we're talking about healthcare workers. Imagine the population. So it's beyond that. So we said, we need to do something concrete on this. So we established, we developed a, a, a framework. And you see that, that plane? That plane is landing, OK? But probably it doesn't have the wheels. So probably the, it may have some type of disability as well. But we need to land. We need to land. We need to touch ground. We need to go where the things matter. And in that regard, we developed a framework, a framework where we can step by step go and move towards where we want to be, but measure it and look and assess that. If you do something that nobody knows, that thing doesn't, it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not useful. And unfortunately, we are learning many things that are, uh, let's say, in theory, but not moving into practice. So we move, and we have three levels of health facilities. The health facilities that are exclusive, not exclusive in terms of, well, I'm exclusive. No, exclusive because they are exclude, ex excluding the people with disabilities. The other ones that probably are including because they have something in place, for example, ramps or some other areas, etc. But most of them should be, must be inclusive in the real sense. So we, we have that process and we, we do the assessment and we know where the hospital is located in terms of aut autonomy in terms of response. So we see, for example, here that this hospital is in this area. So we need to improve that area because we want every hospital to be in this quadrant. And even new hospitals are not there. So we have tools to identify easily which are the shortcomings on those things. And then we update the plan, the same plan that the response plan that the hospital has, but now with people with disabilities. And now taking into consideration the patients that are coming, the community's needs and the personal needs. And we can update those plans and we do also beyond that, we do simulation exercise. We test the hospital's plan. We include those in the drills, and then we go and do a second assessment. And that's very important because the implementation of those things are something that are go beyond people with disabilities. And now we are thinking, oh, why don't we include also the inclusion of, of people with disabilities in disaster risk management in pre-hospital care? Why don't we include in the emergency response teams those are the medical responses. Why don't we include in the actual response? So we are moving towards new endeavors. It is not end. And this is a process that began more than 20 years ago. It began in 85 in the Americas. And it's a long journey. But we move from safe hospitals to multi-hazard assessment to surge capacity to smart hospitals, to inclusion on, on disaster risk management, and we are moving towards something that is coming into reality, not just a dream. These are the, you can check there, and you have all the tools that you can find there, and they are available for everybody. Thank you so much.